Adi Gargil. Nice meeting nice you. Nice to meet you. And we are going to discuss a very, very interesting topic, something very dear to my heart. Um, that is like, I am a great patriot. I, I really love my country and that is why I thought that as we celebrated 71st Independence Day this 15th August, mm -hmm. I, uh, you have been my professor yeah. and I um, almost thought that yes, you must have witnessed the first Independence Day of yeah. our country. That is 15th August 1947. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to know from you how old were you then? And could you, as a child, comprehend what was happening around you? Oh, sure. Uh, I was a nine-year-old kid then. And uh, uh, the first Independence Day, I very distinctly remember. Uh, earlier evening, I mean, uh, the whole city was agog with excitement. And uh, house to house, I mean, people were talking and chattering about Independence. And, uh, people had uh, bought flags and so next morning I also hoisted a flag okay. on the balcony of the house in which we live, the rented house. Then also a string of flags I hung in the balcony, they went down to see it. And there was a lot of excitement about uh, being free. Of course, I wonder whether people at that time really understood the true meaning of freedom. Elders might have understood. But the interesting thing was, that uh, some elders were a bit skeptic as to how we shall run the whole show. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, fine, we have given the Britishers out, as you say, but uh, will you be able to manage this country? Uh, because it was uh, going to be in the height of Indians, and this kind of feeling was particularly on the part of a uh, bureaucratic staff, that is to say, the office going people, government of servants. And uh, they had worked under British officers mm -hmm. and they doubted whether the Indian counterparts would really uh, carry on the burden or the work very effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so these people were a bit skeptical about it, but as a whole. But as a child, you, yes. Could, uh, yes. you, yes, you could receive this from the adults yes. that what's yes. happening in their yes. mind. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, this is uh, luckily God has given me a very fine memory. Yes, I can recall uh, events since, the, uh, since 1942 and uh, the soldiers occasionally moving around the lanes or streets and the, city, the military jeeps going here and there and that was just to you know mid-Second World War, 43, 44 yes. and then there would be a lot of talk, house to house, every evening, well, uh, today Hitler had advanced at the time that this Togu has fallen that uh, in what was Hitler committed suicide and that Germans would be finding it difficult and this and that, a lot of excitement. And then uh, there was a marked change suddenly even in 47, we became free. Mm -hmm. Well, till earlier years there was, uh, at least in Indore, uh, I mean Indore, in born and brought up, and uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, riots, communal riots. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen, I mean, processions from day in and day out and at night going you see, through lanes and sit, uh, streets of the city. You see, one Muslim position would go and they would just you know, say, Narayat right, and they Allah or Akbar. Then that would be followed after a few minutes by the procession of the Hindus. You see, Jai and uh, then shouting the names of um, leaders, Mahatma Gandhi ki Jai, you see, Hindustan, Zindabad. You see, and like that, processions would go. And in the city, there would be talk of, uh, I say, communal fights. Once it so happened that uh, as a kid, I had a problem with my eyes. My, I had my eyes damaged there, I mean, because of smallpox. Mm -hmm. Only in right eye, I had a problem. Mm -hmm. So, once when my father was taking me mm -hmm. to the talk, for three days, suddenly on the way, the gentleman who knew my father said, If you don't go by, you say, go by the other lane, mm -hmm. I say, firing has taken place, oh, that's in the public square, and uh, things like that would happen, that was just a year earlier. I mean, communal tension yeah, was Communal tension would always be there. I mean, I mean, uh, it was a time where, uh, I mean, and you know, uh, while the Muslims were always armed with weapons, swords and things like that, okay. the most Hindu houses we even now do not have any weapons. Okay. It's even now, they don't even have any weapons. Okay. So, uh, we would just, you know, lock the doors from inside with heart. Mm -hmm. Then uh, ladies would, you know, keep 
you see, a pot full of uh, red chili powder so that if some attackers came, they would throw it in their eyes. Then something like this, they would keep for washing the clothes department as they call it. So somebody, somebody would keep it near her head, some steak or something like that. Oh then gosh. we would keep watch. On, uh, whether, this, like, so yeah, you are yeah, narrating, I feel yeah. I am visualizing something <laughs> out of yeah. a movie. Yeah. I mean, this is what we are seeing. Uh, then far don't sleep in that kind of then uh, in some places where you see more elders were available, mm -hmm. so they would keep a wash term by term. And you will not believe that even post independence, this trend continued, this communal rioting in 56 I had I shifted to Bhopal, not my yeah. parents. I was just for coming my to that, that yeah. because yeah. like we all were happy that we yeah. are independent now. Yeah. But yeah. probably there was a mixed feeling mixed of feeling. happiness and apprehension. apprehension. Like you started telling yeah. me yeah. Uh, with, at the right at the beginning yeah. you said yeah. that the elders and the adults yeah. around in the society yeah. were skeptical about whether we would be uh, exactly. capable of handling Particularly the government And then this communal tension. So but then as children, like from what you say, probably yeah. all the kids yeah. around also were yeah. affected badly with all this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as kids, we did not exactly understand, really speaking. We only knew that uh, um, if there was any problem, there would be some riot, danga, as we use that Just word. Just that you would know. Yeah, that, that much we but would know. But you knew that this is between two religions? Yeah, we knew. You knew that, that the fight five. is between two yes, religions? Yes, yes, yes. So between you never asked that, are they no. not Indians? No, no, we were. I mean, so, see, whatever is the religion, we no. all are Indians. No, the I mean, these, are, I mean, these are big questions which we were never put to the kids like us. Yeah, but, but we knew that much yeah. that Hindus and Muslims, they were fighting. fighting and uh, you will not believe that even when later on I shifted to Bhopal, not my family but myself, because there was evening college mm -hmm. and family circumstances uh, prevailed upon me to uh, take up a job there and join the night college for okay. graduation. Mm -hmm. So, Bhopal was a Muslim state. And uh, in okay, 19... Bhopal was a yes, Muslim yes, state? Yes, yes, it was in our state. Yeah. And uh, 56, 57 and 59, three years, you see, there were communal riots. 56, I mean, 57, now, 59. 59, 58 was a quiet year. Then later on, uh, later on in 84, something happened. But after that, there was quiet. But then this... Uh, so, uh, exactly around Independence, uh, First Independence Day, yeah. how was the situation there? The situation, I mean, I was in Indore. You were in, and, and you so were just nine years old. I was in India. But I mean, uh, everybody, uh, now for, for, it, it appeared at, the, at that moment they had settled down. And uh, uh, the issue of Hindu and Muslim and communal thinking and communal rights uh, had uh, been probably for some time sidetracked. I mean, I mean, a nice in the sense that, I mean, no communal riots broke out in Indore at least in 47, 48. Uh, uh, and again, the partition uh, thing, what we partition, hear and yeah, read in about the yeah, darkest phase of Indian history. Yeah, then again in 47, after partition, I mean, yeah. there was more violence right. because uh, the so transfer of population. Did you witness something yeah. like that in Indore? Uh, uh, not much, frankly speaking, because, I mean, we weren't, uh, we weren't allowed to go alone mm -hmm. in the streets anywhere. Elders would come and talk about something, uh, then speeches of Nehru and Patel appealing people to keep, I mean, maintain yeah. peace. And then uh, um, came the death of Gandhi, yeah. and uh, there were again a lot of uh, tension. Yeah. And death kind was of, like yeah, assassination on the right side. Riots would break out, but uh, not much happened in Hindu at that time, and it happened in Pune. Uh, I say, but uh, okay. at that time, yeah, Indo was, uh, I mean, Indo has always witnessed a lot of rioting. Yes, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, industri it has been an industrial city since the beginning. Right. And uh, I mean, it has a very uh, rich content of mixed population. Mm -hmm. You name the community, it is there. You it name the city, they are there. Punjabis are there, Sindhis are there, Maharashtrians are there, Marwadis are there, Gujaratis are there. You name, Bohra community is there. Muslims are there in prominent. I mean, so truly a secular state. Yeah. Truly a secular state. Yes, truly a secular state. And it's a mixed population there. Everybody going in the zone, nobody really bothers. I mean, it's a sort of mini Bombay, right. rightly speaking. Right. I mean, nobody that way bothered about anybody right. there. But these are the things that happened then. then. And a lot of writing and uh, communal conflicts and uh, uh, reports would be there oh, in that lane, the and such person had been stabbed, this and such person. I mean, sometimes there would be exaggeration also. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, I mean, this tendency to exaggerate is so funny in India 
that in uh, 1984, I was uh, held up at Agra myself, my daughters and wife were gone on a tour of North. We wanted to see Delhi, Agra, and uh, my brother in law, younger brother, was there in Agra. And we were just in the Kinai Bazaar of Agra when the news of Indira Gandhi's yeah. being shot dead yeah. came. And then the shops closed, everything. And then, uh, you see, rumors started floating. I mean, two days there was stuff, we couldn't go out. So I had to postpone my return. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were just stationed in Agra only. Yeah. In the evening, in the backyard, we would gather, talk of things very quietly, the front door would be closed and be ready to face the situation as it could come. And uh, then one day suddenly somebody said, well, we were there after four or five days we returned. Then they said that train service had resumed the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the train uh, was at about 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Before that, somebody got the new luggage in. Sabo, then they said, train to Gary, or all the Pachman Gashe Katiwi was my luggage. There was no proof in it. What had happened was, oh somebody had been they say attacked at Gawalia, that is far away yeah, from Gavalia, uh, yeah. Agra, mm -hmm. about 240 miles or so. But I mean, people have this. But they, they are creating this kind of stories so, coming Stories up. and you know, excitement is generated by that. But then were you and scared so, when, as a child when you heard of these yeah. things happening uh, around 47? I mean, no, surprisingly, I was. Were you scared and your friends, yeah. you would be scared of no, no, no. We were venturing out of your house? Probably we did not understand. The real meaning, meaning of the meaning of rioting it. and Hindu Muslim conflict. We only knew one thing that some Hindu had been killed by a Muslim and some Muslim had been attacked by Hindu. But beyond that, we did not. Now, understand do you feel much. that the whole purpose was defeated? Like, like we uh, should have all have been really very happy waking up in the independent, free India. Why not? Right on 16th August, like you know, waking yeah. up in yeah. free India today. Yes. But then these communal clashes. And no, the in fact, which people were, were very happy. They were happy. They were happy. They were quite excited. Did it so happen that people just got lax no, after that? Like, okay, I mean, we have some target to achieve. Today, when you look back, I mean, you uh, see, uh, uh, this is a, a sort of psychological um, aspect of life that uh, actually, when something happens, I mean. You just witness the accident, you just yeah. witness the thing, you are not scared of it. Not but when you think about it later on, I mean, you start getting yeah. cramps. Oh, is that, and that, that, that is what happens. Okay. Mm, so we, I mean, and we were in the situation. Really? Nobody at that moment in life. I mean, people took it in their stride. Okay, fine, this has been happening. I mean, if something is happening now, it is not something new. The earlier generation knew that these are the things we have witnessed. In fact, um, I was luckily. God has given me that kind of nature. I was not scared of all these things because, as I said, yeah. that in Bhopal, I mean, there was such common writing that when I was returning from office, for the first time in life, I realized that there was, uh, I mean, some tension in the atmosphere. And uh, at the office did drop me on the road, say that road there, and this was my the uh, gate of the quarters in which mm -hmm. I was living with okay. But to even cross that much distance, for the first time in life, I felt a little bit of tension. So I was alone, mm -hmm. you see, and uh, oh, the, house, the small huts were there. Were people had closed their doors, etc. But there was uh, always that kind of feeling that somebody might run out okay. and attack you. Because, you see, riots, the only thing that, uh, the only law that operates is okay. Since you have killed him, I will go and kill him. I mean, they are not your personal enemies. Okay. But it's just that yeah. you kill somebody of yeah. the so, other so religion so because they are... That's all. I mean, A has killed B, so B says, okay, I will not please. Okay, just in one line, can you put, what was the social milieu before independence and free India? Like, uh, was there really a market difference um, in the social attitude in uh, bureaucratic families or no socioeconomic as well, I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that there was any difference before attaining independence and afterwards? You see, uh, before attaining independence as kids, we didn't have much knowledge about the social uh, aspects and social you as you call it. Mm -hmm. But one thing I can tell you that uh, uh, with the increase of population, problems have increased. Uh, the population was not so much at that time, though it was quite large, even then, before independence. 
But uh, okay, fine. Um, people, I mean, you know, Muslims, I mean, at personal level, okay, very fine relations. But at uh, social level, God knows what happens. Everybody knows why these, these things are happening. But uh, I mean, in general, at least in the cities in which I live, I mean, there would be a general calm, there would be, a, I mean, good interaction mm -hmm. among people of all communities. All it is only when the riots broke out that uh, something irrational happened. Otherwise, uh, normally, uh, the feelings would be, I mean, once it was over, I mean, okay, it was back to normalcy. Did and, you get to uh, hear the first speech by Jawana? No, I didn't get to hear. Though, there was a lot of talk about it yeah. that they uh, spoke a lot because he was the leading orator of the time. Right. And it's a very people famous speech. talked a lot about Jawaharlal Nehru, Patel, Gandhi. These were the names regularly right. on the tip of that tongue of paper. And uh, I have heard Nehru, I have heard Patel both personally. Uh, and, uh, you see their speeches. Because by the time I went to high school, I mean Nehru had visited Hindu two or three times. Okay. And in his typical Hindustani right. and uh, resonant voice, he would speak. And my goodness, what an appearance the man had almost to. If you remove his cap, you look more Roman than an Indian. Oh, really? I mean, you may not have seen. No, Nehru. of course not. Uh, just okay. the pictures I and videos, maybe. Oh, for I mean, he was a I mean, I mean, man, I see, bursting with energy. I tell you, okay. I was in Bhopal once. I saw him get down. Uh, he had come to Bhopal. We had gone to see him at Bairagan Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, he landed. The plane landed. He came out, waved at the people, got into the car. He would always travel in the open car standing okay. in his typical Sherwani yeah. white cap then people and rose? gang garments okay. and a rose, rose obviously a rose yeah. in his achkan yes. they call it achkan or Sherwani whatever you mm -hmm. call it uh, people here don't know the particular yeah. meaning of Sherwani once I say uh, some shopkeepers here took up some jabbas on this day and said uh, the prices of Sherwani have come down again to see so I realize mean, these people do not know the meaning of what Sherwani or Ashkan I see. So I got one deliberately stitched for myself. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to show, no, what is no, what that color here on it? I will show you what it is. <laughs> but then his typical uh, brownish beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Very face I tell you. Mm -hmm. And the car passed. And uh, I think we saw Nehru from as near a distance as this much. Okay. So big green lines. Really? Uh, and when you look at people here, yeah, yeah. no, people, you know, people who throw garments at him, you Throw them back at somebody, so you took them down it. political. I tell you, very charming. And I mean, in the crowd, we students were there, and then one, uh, this Christian Padri, as you call him, was standing. And he took the garland and threw it in his direction. Even there, they say, um, the politician in him was alive. All the communities yeah, were All communities should be. And yeah. then, threw a garland commonly at students. That's and true. of course, uh, at all of us. So, all of us, you see, as we tried to catch it, each of us got some flowers <laughs> and the garland was from the class paid by. But, I mean, he was a very interesting man. I tell you, uh, I saw him and then a quick temper as he was. Okay. I say, so, uh, as student, yeah. once uh, for the final suggestion, we posted on duty. Yeah. And my duty was uh, at the water point. Okay. And so the, after the session, these leaders would come and they were in Shami and arranged and lunch was arranged there. Mm -hmm. And wherever he was, 115 would come for lunch. Mm -hmm. Before anybody could come, his car had come. Okay. He got down, got down and went, making fast strikes, he went to the table. Uh, I have come and then he picked up a plate. Uh, he didn't want anybody to serve him. Okay. And then uh, he would serve yeah, he him. Come, he was very. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, what to call is, you know, meager in his eating habits. Mm -hmm. Took a little bit of rice, probably one paratha or something like that, and he looked into some pots and he didn't like much of it. Okay. He was a non-vegetarian. Okay. And he had gone to the Nawab's palace for dinner. For dinner. So he took a little bit of dal or something on the rice and took a bit of white here and there. Took it a little cigarette and uh, I thought he might need water. I went there with the grass. Okay. We were given this tent. So we had the privilege uh, to yes. go and serve water to yeah. him. So, uh, we were given this training. Look, you will raise the glass like this, like this, like this. You will not give anyone to you. Okay. So I picked it up and went to him. No, no, he would not like being served. He went to the table, picked up a glass of water, drank it, went to the corner, lit his cigarette, 
special <laughs> brand. You would never accept what anybody's secret. Not he would carry his own. Yeah, his own brand. I mean, however great a person around him, he okay. would not accept his cigarette. I mean, he would just smoke his brand, mm -hmm. uh, smoke it, he would bring to the watch, the car came, he got into it and left it. Straight away. Oh, and in the meanwhile, one incident I will tell you. I can see that, the memory uh, yeah, etched in your yeah. mind, like, oh, and then, uh, spending some time. Uh, he was it. just uh, eating it, I mean, the, near the table, yeah. and somebody came and he was standing there, and uh, the whole thing took, the drama took place in Hindi. Mm -hmm. So somebody came behind him, probably it was Dujan Narvanda. Paniti was a size of the Just to know, he would get angry very soon. And he turned his neck in his legal manner and said, Jaiya, Jawar Lal Jaiya, Jawar Lal Oh, he turned back again, resumed his eating. Okay, the next moment, he was very quiet. Quiet. Ah, I mean, he would not return the anger. Hours together, no. What, what a, how, how handsome. And I'm so lucky it was you said, I mean, film people have said, film industry people, Devanan has said, late Mr. Devanan, yeah. that uh, today, all these three great Devraj and Dilip, they had gone to meet him. Mm -hmm. And they said, You have the most photogenic face in the country. Oh, in and the country? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could snap him from any side, you would look the same. So, so even, so even with balance, so brilliant looking. I mean, if you had gone to film work, I mean, it would have been a very great film. You know, you can't believe. I mean, even now you look at his nose line and all those I things know. and um, we also, and yes. even today, and yeah. as kids, we would be yeah. always fascinated yeah. looking at his pictures and, and try actually, to get yeah. some glimpses of old videos coming yeah. on Doordarshan. Yes. Doordarshan is one channel which would have all these old videos. Yeah, and they, people they, have, uh, yeah. I mean, he was a man like that. Well, yeah. and very yeah. open hearted. I mean, he would not, but there was something, there was something in English about him, no nonsense. And uh, that typical mixture of East and West was with him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, That's how his uh, first speech was, uh, yes. is even today considered even today, as yeah. one of the best orations best oration. in the world. I mean, you are a great orator. Yeah. You see, as uh, at the hour of 12, midnight, when the country, when the world sleeps, India wakes to freedom. Wakes. India wakes to freedom. Yeah. What a great orator. So and, you, uh, you consider India yourself India. very fortunate very to fortunate. have been there yes. at uh, very fortunate. midnight when yes. we got independence. Yes, though, yeah. I mean, we didn't go to it. What I mean, that was in Delhi. Right. But, uh, most of us were away. You had a radio uh, set with you? No, no. We oh, didn't have okay. a radio set then. Okay. Very few houses had. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why yeah, I asked And my father because would occasionally go to... People would all gather around. At, to, like, uh, at one place has, yeah. and uh, listen to the speech. Yeah. My father would go in the evening or for 9 o'clock news. Okay. And uh, uh, I could understand uh, uh, what he said. God gave me, God has given me one uh, gift. And that is uh, the gift of the languages. I mean... Uh, that's what uh, Nehru used to say. Yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, I was never a very brilliant scholar. I went to the language, mm -hmm. but uh, my story was mostly in the language papers. Okay. Uh, say my father gave me the alphabet of English. I didn't go to school first of all. Remember? Uh -huh. Okay. My school education six to ten, intermediate, private, BAMA, finished. Oh, okay. Yeah, a very okay. shortcut to education. Directly. The primary okay. primary school I didn't go to. We were taught at home at something, home. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Father gave me the alphabet of English, but somehow I developed love for English. And even by sixth standard, though I was in Marathi medium, I would speak, um, try to speak. Sometimes, if I went wrong, the elders in those days knew only one thing: give it back. Oh. You see, mispronunciation, back. It's like this. I said, pardon. He said, it's pardon, not pardon. One back. I like that. <laughs> for both, no for you, But it's my practice. Okay. That I uh, uh, picked up all language skills. Hindi was a state language in Marathi at home. Mm -hmm. So all the three languages I learned. Yeah. My greatest enemy was mathematics. Okay. <laughs> and in the school, I say I would start going back. Languages on the front bench. I would always be on the treasury bench. Social sciences second bench. Or history probably I would be there. Then geography I would go back. Right. Science fourth uh, uh, row. And for mathematics, I used to bump in my head like this. And so that the teacher for, doesn't see you. No, no, so that he doesn't see me and I would pick him and doing a lot of summations. <laughs> okay. I didn't know I passed my preparation by mugging, cramming two examples of algebra. Yes, this is always me. so, but then everybody has one or two subjects of yeah. interest. Other things are all by force. Yeah. That yeah. But 
that was a wonderful time, I think, of the film. Because, you know, uh, people in those days, they were probably more interested in the, in, in the country, country than uh, Nepal. Of course, I'm, I don't have any such thing, because it was very... Uh, you can't blame people today, the population has increased, you are 70 years now away from the whole situation, and you can't expect people day in and day out to shouting slogans and uh, always no. thinking of country and it's... But just to ha yeah. have some patriotic feeling yeah. in your mind but is one thing, uh, you can always be sure that as and when the oxygen arises or the moment comes, India stands, stands as one man. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's our strength. Yeah, which, uh, we can say that's our strength. Uh, you, were, you weren't there in the world in 1962 when Chinese. Uh, no, uh, I was not in 62. Yeah, so you must be of the 70s and 80s. Yeah, 67. Uh, I'm born. 67. 67. In 62. I witnessed the 71 war. Yeah. I remember. I yeah, have memories yeah. of those days. But yeah, and 62, this Chinese war had uh, uh, taken place. And um, uh, there was a, a lot of meaning among people, whether people were living in the United States or that. But suddenly, it was found that uh, people stood as one group, I one band, I uh, see, behind the Prime Minister. That was, that is the strength but of the, the country. When oxygen comes, we are all together. Yeah. You see, we forget the differences, we come together. We come together. That's the strength, strength and that's yeah. being a true Indian. Yeah, exactly. That and that's how we have Dr. Nan yeah. Um, yeah. giving his uh, yeah. views of India and the first Independence Day and his views on Indians as such. Yeah. So it was really interesting, sir, talking to you. Yeah. He's been a professor for almost 50 years. He's been teaching yes. students. Yeah. And um, I have also been fortunate. I've been his student. Very, very thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Wish you a long and healthy life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.